And that's how that tape ends on WKCR. We're going to play more music, uh, rather more interview with Phil Schapp and Walter Bishop uh, on this memorial broadcast this evening. Um, Guys Alternatives, as you probably know, is preempted in favor of a memorial broadcast for Walter Bishop. We'll talk more about that and play some music and some more um, interview, as I've said, over the next few hours until 9 o'clock. So stay tuned, WKCR. Good evening and welcome to Birdland. And plausibly, but quite unlikely, uh, welcome to our live broadcast over WKCR FM New York 89.9 on the dial. Birdland is a far superior place technically than KCR is, so you are both seeing and hearing the music that's about to be played, and I doubt very much that we're even on the air. But it's a pleasure to give the air over to people who know Charlie Parker's music, and in one very precious uh, instance was Charlie Parker's right-hand man, the pianist and leader of this evening's quintet. How about a round of applause for Mr. Walter Bishop, Jr.? Since Walter plays piano, we're going to introduce the rhythm section next and leave the horns for last because the rhythm section is really one person. So these are Walter Bishop Jr.'s hearts and lungs. On bass, gentleman who has got a big instrument to compensate for the weight he's lost. I congratulate him. You look like a million bucks. Mr. Paul Brown on the bass. And a gentleman who, like uh, John Miller in last week's broadcast and that last week's Birdland, is also a composer and orchestrator, and you often can hear his own striking music with the Chip White Ensemble. I've already given it away. The drummer is Chip White. <laughs> Charlie Parker's birthday is August 29th, and unless you're living in Antarctica, we're not having August 29th weather right now. But on Charlie Parker's birthday, in front of Bird's Musicians and family, the trumpeter selected to play the Parker music was this one selected by Walter Bishop Jr. tonight, Tom Kirkpatrick on trumpet. <laughs> Walter Bishop Jr. has been calling me for a year and saying, you have to hear somebody. He plays me cassettes over a telephone. He sings solos to me. Into, he even writes poetry about him because he loves the alto saxophone of perhaps someone ready to don the mantle of the great Charlie Parker, Harold Jeffter, in his Big Apple debut on alto saxophone. And here's one that, it wasn't August 9th, Chip, it was August 8th of 51 that Charlie Parker laid down the Back Home Blues.
Bishop Jr. has seemed to offered us a reincarnation of Charlie Parker here on the alto saxophone in our Charlie Parker Bird Memorial Month at Birdland. How about Harold Jeffter on the alto saxophone? <laughs> After Back Home Blues, we went to a number called CC, which is also a Charlie Parker original. And uh, we have one of the originals from Charlie Parker's last working band, Walter Bishop Jr. at the piano. And I think we should not only say it, Thank you, but we love you. Walter Bishop Jr., the piano. He's a poet, and he knows it. He's a poet of the jazz piano playing. You know, many people uh, say that the act of New York City nightlife, and indeed all going out, particularly in a snowstorm, I mean, you people are wonderful. I mean, I, I know I had to be here, but you wanted to be here at Birdland. And of course, many people say, well, we're not going to go to the nightclubs and the theaters anymore, man, because, you know, the, the broadcast media will take care of it. You know, well, the broadcast media isn't taking care of anything. And you're seeing it and hearing it. And you're the only people in the world hearing this little quintet right now, although we hope to shift very, very shortly to a live broadcast. And in case you haven't heard, and of course, it's recent news, Birdland, where the live broadcast started from the jazz corner of the world, I think it was uh, December of 1950. We'll have to let Arnold J. Smith check that out or call Phil Schaff and do something. In any case, uh, they started in December of 50. Well, in January of 91, 41 years later, they restarted. They were on WKCR FM New York every Friday night from 9 to 10, live from Birdland, which now, after being called the Jazz Corner of the World since December 15th of 49, is on a corner finally, as it's moved uptown some 53 blocks to 105th Street and Broadway. Birdland. Uh, it's actually a coincidence or fortuitous, but we at Birdland are pleased to acknowledge uh, what we're the namesake of, Charlie Parker, and they have scheduled this entire month of January as a tribute, tribute to the great Charlie Parker. And of course, uh, I'm known to play little Charlie Parker on WKCR at a different time in the AM. And so uh, it's great to have Bird's music at Birdland with live broadcasts, on a weekly basis, Friday nights from 9 to 10, and the old Birdland broadcasts were also on Friday night. You had to stay up much later for them. They went on at uh, 2.03 a.m., but now they're on at 9, 9 p.m., and they go from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. every Friday night. So we have Walter Bishop Jr.'s quintet. Again, the rhythm section contains Paul Brown on bass, Chip White on drums, Tom Kirkpatrick's on trumpet, again, Harold Jeffers, alto, and Walter Bishop Jr., and, you know, there was some question about recording dates on uh, Back Home Blues, but now there's a real question. This tune that they're going to play, Segment, is also known as Diverse, and there are two tunes from the same date that are called Passport. It obviously got mixed up, but if Walter Bishop Jr. says it's Segment, it's Segment. I'm not going to be diverse about it. It's Segment, and you're going to hear it now. I hope you're also hearing it live over WKCR-FM New York. I'm Phil Schaff by the bandstand, hopefully sending out the audio to Greater Snowbound New York, and certainly offering you another taste of Walter Bishop Jr.'s Birdland Bird Band. Columbia 
Lafayette defeats Dartmouth 77 to 75. Their first win in the Ivy League in the Ivy League opener and their first win against Dartmouth in the last. Thank you.